The island of Taiwan is mountainous, with ranges stretching from north to south and rivers flowing mostly from east to west. Since the west coast is flatter, the sediment load from the middle and low courses of these rivers is deposited in the estuaries and thus forms the alluvium. After further depositing, these alluvia become larger pieces of mudflats. Rich in organic salts, these large pieces of mudflats become the hotbed of invertebrates and algae. They also become the roosting place for transient and wintering waders. The estuaries of Guandu Stream in the north, Kaya Stream in Sinju, Dadu River in the central, and the Zenwen River in the south are typical examples of alluvia inhabited by different types of birds. Being the boundary of Tainan City in Tainan County, the south bank of the Zenwen River is included in Tainan City, while the north bank is the territory of Chigu Xiang in Tainan County. On the large alluvium of the Zenwen River, residents practice agriculture and fish farming. Beside the dike, there are different kinds of salt-resistant vegetation. Watercress, jackbean, liana, and reed are the most common types found alongside the Zenwen River estuary. In 1984, the Tainan County government commissioned the Water Conservancy Bureau to construct a dike on the north bank of the Zenwen River estuary and to develop the 820 hectare alluvium on the north bank to be a new tidal flat. At the bottom of the lengthy dike, there are three drainage sluices which allow connections with the outer sea. Affected by the tides, a piece of 280 hectare lagoon between the number two and number three sluices emerges from and submerges into the water. When emerged from the water, this piece of lagoon is very suitable for waders to rest and feed. As it is open and spacious, it provides firm security for birds feeding here and for the highly alert black-faced spoonbills in particular. It's as if they have reached the utopia of their journey. Why are they called black-faced spoonbills? Looking like a heron in appearance with long legs, long neck, and white feathered body, black-faced spoonbills are characterized by their black spoon-like bill and a black mask surrounding their eyes. And that's why they are called the black-faced spoonbill. From mid-October of each year, black-faced spoonbills begin their migration from the north flock by flock and settle on the new tidal flat at the estuary of the Zenwen River to pass the long winter. When first arriving at the new tidal flat, black-faced spoonbills spend most of the daytime sleeping and resting in groups on the tidal flat at the estuary. Following the tidal movement, they change to a more suitable and safe place for roosting. According to preliminary observation, like other similar species, black-faced spoonbills habitually feed at sunset and at nighttime. 
That is the reason people often see them resting and sleeping in the daytime. To study their habit of feeding and behavior in the dark is a truly difficult task. During their passing of the winter at the mouth of the Zenwen River, some black-faced spoonbills feed in the daytime. Feeding becomes more frequent when their return to the north draws closer. That also provides us more chances to study the behavior of the black-faced spoonbill. Besides feeding in the alluvium at the mouth of the Zenwen River, black-faced spoonbills also search prey in the nearby disused fish ponds or fish ponds that have just been harvested. Black-faced spoonbills usually feed in groups from a small group of 3 to 5 to a larger group of 40 to 50. They swing their long and flat spoon-shaped bills in the water looking for food incessantly. Look, here he is. Over there, he got another one. If we observe carefully, we discover that black-faced spoonbills are often accompanied by some kinds of egrets, the great egret in particular. But what do the egrets want? Food above all. When black-faced spoonbills swing their bills in the water, they scare the fish. When these scared fish scatter to the surface, they become the meals of the egrets. Of course, there is no such thing as a free lunch. While black-faced spoonbills are busy feeding, lowering their beaks into the water catching fish, they have no time to detect whether there are enemies drawing close. And these vigilant great egrets become their natural guards against predators. Such cooperation is the most obvious example of mutualism in nature. Whether it is in the alluvium at the mouths of rivers or in shallow fish ponds, black-faced spoonbills amuse themselves after a good meal. One of their favorite amusements is playing with the stems of the plants from the nearby shore with their bills, as if they were playing tug-of-war. According to foreign research, amusement with tugging stems of plants and playing is the habit of black-faced spoonbills. And it is an important process for them to get to know each other. The social and funny behaviors of black-faced spoonbills are interesting. Of course, since they spend the whole day long together, quarrels are inevitable among them. When they quarrel, their trademark big bills become lethal weapons. The dikes of fish ponds are the amusement places for black-faced spoonbills, while the tidal flats are the places for them to bathe, tidy up, and help each other clean feathers.
limited by their long bills, black-faced spoonbills can only clean the feathers of their own bodies and wings. They need others to help them clean the feathers of their head, neck, and around the eyes. Black-faced spoonbills usually make use of the high tide in the sunny daytime to bathe themselves and wash their feathers with tidal water. Afterwards, they sit together stretching and shaking their wings in order to dry their feathers efficiently. The entire bathing process includes bathing, tidying up, and stretching wings. They also jump and play hide-and-seek during bathing. This is the happiest hour for the black-faced spoonbill, and it is not surprising that a poet once described these lovely bathing black-faced spoonbills as dark-faced dancers. Besides black-faced spoonbills, many other visitors come to the new tidal flats of the Zenwen River to pass the winter, including Scolopacidae, Caradridae, and Ardidae. In addition to the new tidal flats at the estuary of the Zenwen River, innumerable birds also pass the winter in the nearby fish ponds. According to a preliminary survey, there are over 200 species of birds in the nearby estuary, and many of them are rare species. This shows that the Zenwen River estuary is the promised land for migratory waders, and black-faced spoonbills will never be alone during their wintering time. In February, when the southern part of Taiwan is getting warm, some black-faced spoonbills begin to change the original white feathers around their necks and at the back of their heads with golden yellow feathers, making them look very different from their original appearance. Some call these golden yellow feathers summer feathers, while some say they are mating feathers. Among all the black-faced spoonbills that pass the winter in Taiwan, there are some immature black-faced spoonbills, and when spring comes in February, they do not have the apparent golden yellow feathers. This is a black-faced spoonbill that has already changed to the mating feathers. The bird behind it is a look-alike except for the black mask surrounding its eyes. It looks almost the same as a black-faced spoonbill. It is a white spoonbill. Some call it a white-faced spoonbill. The white spoonbills often infiltrate a flock of black-faced spoonbills, and if we are not observant enough, we might confuse them. In fact, there are only a few such white spoonbills in Taiwan. From March to April, it's almost time for them to return north, and black-faced spoonbills feed more frequently. They want to store enough energy for the long and tough journey before they return and reproduce.
In addition to the Zhenwen River estuary, black-faced spoonbills have been found elsewhere in Taiwan. But they are usually in small groups and do not remain long. The major roosting site for the black-faced spoonbill to pass the winter in Taiwan is the Zhenwen River estuary. From March onward, they begin to return to the north flock after flock. And not until October will they come again to the Zhenwen River estuary. Despite a record of breeding found in an outlying island in North Korea, traces of the black-faced spoonbill is almost unknown. According to global statistics, there are not more than 400 black-faced spoonbills that have been seen. They are distributed mainly along the east coast of Asia and their range is limited. Now, black-faced spoonbills can only be found in their breeding areas in North Korea and their winter roosting places, which include Japan, South Korea, mainland China, Hong Kong, Hainan Island, Vietnam, and Taiwan. From 1989 to 1993, except at the Zhenwen River estuary, the number of black-faced spoonbills seen in each of these regions was less than 100. Although the number of black-faced spoonbills is very few, many countries have set up protection regions for them. In December 1993, there were about 200 black-faced spoonbills gathered around the estuary of the Zhenwen River. That was about half of the known population in the world. As wildlife conservation becomes more global in focus, we should be concerned about these visitors who travel thousands of miles from the north to pass the winter in Taiwan. We know almost nothing about these mysterious creatures of the Earth. Should we not protect them so that we can learn more about them? Although it appears as wasteland, Alluvium is the springboard for the evolution of many primitive marine organisms. It is probably the origin of fishes, shells, crabs, and waders. However, like all the other mudflats in Taiwan, the alluvium at the estuary of the Zhenwen River is threatened by the pressure of development. If the paradise of wading birds disappears, where will these black-faced spoonbills rest? Today, birds. Tomorrow, men. The destiny that birds face today is a miniature of the fate of man. Man is only a part of nature. Will those who are members of the Earth Village put off your work for a moment and think over the problem and care about wildlife?